Hey, this is Mike from 3dskipper.com, back from the dead. So, today we're going to be taking a look at making this cool energy effect. We're going to be using Maya and After Effects and taking a look at N-Hair particle systems, as well as some custom materials and some custom effects within After Effects. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so we're in Maya with a brand new scene. The very first thing we want to do is go down to our preferences box, which you can find in the bottom right hand corner. This is going to pull up our time slider options. What we want to do is make sure that our max playback speed is set to real time, which happens to be 24 frames per second for me. This is important when we're using dynamics because we want Maya to be able to make accurate simulations. And if it's set to a different setting such as free, it's going to be skipping over frames and it may look jumpy or inaccurate. So once you have it set to real time, click save. The very first thing that we're going to do after setting that is go to polygons and create a sphere. You can hit F to frame the sphere up into your viewport. We're going to hit 5 as well to shade the sphere. And we're going to click R or click on the scaling tool and we're going to scale it down a bit there. Okay. What we're going to do next is create some hairs on our sphere. So if you go to the end dynamics menu, which you can find under this tab, select end dynamics then select the sphere and go to end hair at the top. We're going to use this first tool, create hair, but we're going to select the options box for it so that we have our options panel. What we're going to do is ensure that our output is set to paint effects rather than NURBS curves or both. And we're going to set our U and V counts to be 20. The default might be 8. And we're going to scroll down and we're also going to make sure that our length is set to 10. And we're going to click apply or create hairs which is going to create this huge mess as you'll see in a second. All right, look at that. So the cool thing about Maya's end hair system is that because we output them as paint effects, we can convert them to polygons, which allows us to manipulate them like you would any other polygon, which includes adding materials. But they're still under the influence of the nucleus, which we created them with. So if you go in the outliner, you can actually see we've created a hair system, our paint effects hair, and the nucleus, which is inflicting gravity and other forces upon the hair. In fact, if I were to go down and give myself a few more frames here and click play, you would see the hair be influenced by gravity, which can create some pretty cool effects just in itself. Hit escape to stop playback, go back. So next thing we're gonna do is actually get rid of our gravity because we want to use turbulence instead of gravity. So I'll go to Nucleus, Attribute Editor, and I'll lower my gravity down to zero. The next thing that we want to do is create a turbulence field to affect our hair. So the first thing we're going to do is select our hair system one in the outliner. Then we're going to go up to End Dynamics, Fields, and then select the Options box for Turbulence. You can give the field a name and give it a magnitude. I'm using 50 for mine. We're also going to change the noise ratio to about 0.7, so that's a bit more random. Once you have those settings, go ahead and click Create. Now if you were to play back the timeline, you would see the hair be affected by our turbulence field, like so. It creates kind of an ominous waving feel. Hit Escape, stop the playback. Now comes the cool part. What we can do is select our paint effects hair Go to Modify, Freeze Transformations, and go to Modify, Convert, Paint Effects to Polygons. This is cool because now we can apply materials and things to our hair because they are actually polygons, yet they're still influenced by the nucleus that the original hair is tied to. So, now that we have our hair as a polygon, we can go up to Window, rendering editors and hypershade. It's going to pull up our material editor here. So we can click blend right there to create a new blend material and then go to color and select the checker box. I'm going to be creating a ramp render node under the checker box. This will allow me to put a gradient on our hair but because I just want a two-tone gradient and click this X next to the green get rid of that middle color. I'm going to change this top blue one to be more of a neon looking blue color. 
this bottom red is going to be more of a uh, darker purplish color. When you're done with that, you can click on this lower box with the arrow sticking out of it. Go back to our attribute editor. Now, we don't have to worry about things like eccentricity or reflectivity because we're going to be hiding the source of our material, which means you're not actually going to see the hair. The only thing we're going to see is this glow, which we're going to be creating now. So give your glow intensity a value of 0.7, 0 0.7, okay? So our color is going to be shown through our glow, but as I said, none of these other values are really going to apply. So let's go ahead and select on our hair polygons, right click on our blin, and click assign material to selection. And then we can close up our hypershade. So next we need to actually hide that sphere that we created right at the beginning. Because our hair has no mass when it's rendering, we're gonna see the sphere in the middle. So if you click P sphere one in the outliner, go over to our channel box, Click on the visibility where it says on, hit zero, and that'll turn it off. Okay, so now if we zoom in, you can see there is no sphere in the middle. The hairs are just going back to nothing. Now we're going to go to our render settings here. We're going to change our renderer to mental ray. We're going to change our image format to targa. We're going to use our frame slash animation extension to be name underscore number dot extension. And we'll give it a frame padding of three or four. Okay. Our frame range, we're going to start at frame one and end at frame 150. Now this is going to determine how long your render is. So 150 frames is what I'm rendering out, and it's 24 frames per second, so you can do the math there. Make sure the by frame is set to one so that it renders out each individual frame. We can leave our renderable camera to perspective because we don't have another camera made at the moment. And make sure you have alpha channel mask clicked on. We can change our image size to be HD 1080 or HD 720, whatever your preference is. I'll do 720 just to make it go a little faster. And leave our resolution at 72 for now. Then I'm gonna go up to quality. And I'm gonna select quality presets, production, fine trace, which is the highest quality default setting you can choose out of these. Um, I'm gonna change my filter to be Mitchell which is slightly better than triangle and leave the rest as it is. So now we can go through and play, get into a more interesting position with our hair. And then try and do a test run and see where we're at. All right, so we're looking pretty good with this. I'm gonna close this up. I'm going to turn on our resolution gate so we can see what we're actually going to be rendering and zoom out so we can see the full object here. Go back to the beginning. Now to render this out, you have to have a project set. So if you go to File, Set Project, you can choose where you want it to be set. Click Choose. If you haven't created a project yet, you can go to File, Project Window, new, you know, make one there. So next thing we need to do is go to rendering, batch render, render, sorry, and then batch render. And if you click that, you'll start rendering out your scene. So now we're in After Effects. This is where we get to be a little more creative. The first thing we need to do is import our sequence that we created in Maya. So if we go to the project window, double click, you can bring up our import folder. So let's go to our Maya project folder, go to images, click on the first image there, and click target sequence, and then click open. We're gonna leave it as a straight and unmatted sequence. 
Next, we'll drag the sequence down to the new comp icon, which looks like a film strip. Then we'll go to Layer, New, Solid. And we'll make just a solid black and make sure it's comp size and click OK. We'll drag that underneath our energy field. And now you can start to get an idea of what this is going to look like. Turned out pretty interesting. So I'm going to duplicate our sequence by hitting Command D. And on my top sequence, I'm going to turn off the visibility by unchecking the eye. Now I'm going to toggle switches in mode on the bottom sequence and select track mat, alpha inverted mat. Then I'm going to select this top sequence and hit S to bring up my scale. And I'm going to scale it down a bit. That's going to create this solid black center, which gives it kind of more evil looking. I don't know. It looks pretty cool. I'm going to drag another copy of our sequence down and put that on top of both of our other sequences. And I'm going to right click on the layer in the timeline and click Time, Time Reverse Layer. So that one's going to play backwards, which just kind of randomizes the whole sequence a bit more. So now we can add some more effects. So if we go to our top sequence here and go to Effect, Distort, CC Lens. It's going to create this cool ball effect going on. So I'm going to lower our convergence a bit, maybe it's about 80-ish. I'm going to increase our size to be about 69 or 70. These settings might change depending on your comp size. Now I'm going to duplicate this composition. And on the top one I just made, I'm going to turn off the CC lens effect. And I'm also going to turn off the visibility. I'm going to add a track mat to this second one to be alpha inverted, kind of like we did with the bottom two. And then I'm going to drag both of these to be on top of the solid and below our original two comps. Okay. I'm also going to grab this bottom one and go to Effect, Stylize, Glow. And I'm going to reduce our glow intensity and increase our glow radius, like so. I'm just going to scale it up too because we got these corners going on. And basically, that's the groundwork for our effect. So, the last step in our project is to go ahead and render it. So, we're going to make sure that our working area which are these two bars here, is set to encompass our entire project, which it is. Then we'll go to Composition, Add to Render Queue. For our settings, we're going to go to use QuickTime. We'll go to Format Options, make sure it's set to Animation for a fully lossless video, and Quality at 100. This is going to output an MOV file, which is going to be very large, probably you know, hundreds of megabytes. So your best bet is to go ahead and re-encode it after the fact using Adobe Media Encoder or FFmpeg or some other encoding software. You know, try and get it down to a smaller MP4. Once you set a file name, go ahead and click Render and you're good to go.